having you know your blood clot when it's supposed to bleeding of the brain bleeding from your anus right arguably the side effect profile even in the severe cases of azetamide use is not as severe as that it's not you know nothing on there for as far as i can see is going to kill you what's going on guys this is jacob from sunday lifters in this video today i wanted to sort of look at the drug azetamide it's something that i came across recently i was watching a podcast with leo longevity he had a he had a panel on a couple of other guys derek more more plates more dates was was one of them um and i feel like shit but there was another guy i can't remember vigorous steve it was vigorous steve um those three were sort of doing a podcast together and they discussed this um drug called azetamide which i'd not heard of before but it was the way it was described to me or, or i perceived it was it, it sort of acted in a very similar way to how statins do in terms of their um how they interact with lipids particularly uh, low dense lipoproteins or bad cholesterol within the body um but also how apparently the, the side effect profile of azetamide compared to sort of your other sort of standard run of the mill um, statins was much lower so I decided to do a load of research I've been looking into this ever since I heard about it just trying to figure out um, what it's all about and whether it did sort of live up to how it was you know described on that podcast and and to be honest from what i've seen it, it it does seem to be a really sort of slept on drug within the sort of realm of statins and sort of drugs that, that sort of lower ldl within us like it or not we live in a world where cardiovascular disease and and sort of cardiovascular related problems are pretty much the number one killer um, for people today this seems to me to be quite an important area that needs looking into um, for that very reason in 2015 to 2018 nearly 12 percent of adults uh, aged 20 and older had total cholesterol higher than 240 milligrams per deciliter and 17 had high density lipoprotein or good cholesterol at less than 40 milligrams per deciliter uh, slightly more than half of US adults uh, who could benefit from cholesterol medicine are currently taking it. Nearly 94 million US adults aged 20 or older have total cholesterol levels higher than 200 milligrams uh, per deciliter. 28 million adults in the United States have total. Yeah, so you get the idea. Um, interestingly enough, it doesn't actually say anything about LDL specifically which is a little bit fucking annoying because I didn't notice that when I was going over this to be honest uh, it's all total stuff having high blood cholesterol raises the risk of heart disease the leading cause of death and for stroke the fifth leading cause of death so heart disease is the leading cause of death in the in the world at the moment um, and you know having high cholesterol does make a major contribution to people's development of heart disease so also um, you know when people's um, sort of total cholesterol gets into a certain range what starts to happen is you get inflammation and plaque build up within sort of arteries and it's actually when that plaque breaks off from arteries um, and goes into the bloodstream it causes major blockages in in sort of pivotal points within our sort of um, our bloodstream and our arteries you know like the sort of entry to the heart or going into the brain and that is ultimately what ends up causing heart attacks and strokes so we just have a little look at this as well ldl cholesterol levels should be less than 100 milligrams per deciliter um, levels of 100 to 129 are acceptable for people with no health issues but may be more concerned for those with heart disease or heart disease risk factor there's nothing concrete out there at the minute that sort of as far as i can see confirms this but again leo longevity sort of made the claim that if you get your ldl below 70 um, milligrams per deciliter 
they they can't prove that you actually get any sort of inflammation or plaque build up at that sort of level of low density uh, lipoprotein so that's just something worth knowing so yeah i just wanted to go over them stats sort of emphasize how much of a problem um, high cholesterol is in today's world and i think it's general knowledge now that people know having a high cholesterol in general is bad but i don't think people realize how at risk they are of being one of those people who does have high cholesterol you know there's a one in two chance that you are one of those people basically more than half the population of america have a higher cholesterol than is is deemed safe really first world countries are not going to be that far behind that statistic including the uk i'm just going to read like a sort of medical summary a, an opinion piece and a bit of a write-up by a medical doctor named paul thompson a lot of cardiovascular experts have got great interest in azetamide and its effects um on its own and sort of teamed up with with general purpose statins i think paul thompson really does a good job in this piece of sort of summing up azetamide and how it's sort of perceived in the in the sort of pharmaceutical industry at the moment azetamide reduces ldl cholesterol by reducing intestinal cholesterol absorption which increases hepatic ldlc receptors and decreases blood ldlc azetamide reduces it LDLC approximately 20% when used alone and 24% when added to statins, probably because statins increase intestinal cholesterol absorption. The results vary among patients and some patients get bigger LDL reductions. 20% uh, or more is a gigantic effect given that doubling a statin dose only reduces LDL, an additional 6% of baseline value. Uh, the statin rule of six apparently that's what it's called but increases the statin side effects so what that's basically saying there is the problem with sort of general purpose statins is when you increase the dosage it has sort of marginal effects on its primary purpose which is reducing ldl further um, but the side effects are much more likely to occur when you sort of up them doses the reduction of LDL with doubling of statin is even less at higher doses of the most potent statins, increasing resuvastatin from 20 to 40 milligrams a day or atorvastatin sorry, from 40 to 80 milligrams per day only reduces LDL an additional 3 to 4% of baseline value. So I've always been a azetamide fan, especially since many of the patients sent to me have statin intolerance, but azetamide does not get much respect among non-lipid experts. Why has azetamide gotten such a bad rap? It started with the enhance or an azetamide and simvastatin in hypercholesterolemia enhances atherosclerosis regression study, enhance randomized patients and familial hypercholesterolemia to simvastatin 80 milligrams daily with or without azetamide prescribed at 10 milligrams daily participants ldl c off of any lipid lowering medications was 318 plus 66 milligrams per deciliter but all subjects were recruited from excellent lipid clinics and have been well treated before enrollment sorry if i butchered some of those words in there on study, drug LDLCs were reduced to 193 plus 60 milligrams per deciliter with simvastatin and to 141 plus 53 milligrams per deciliter in simvastatin with the azetamide. The primary outcome was change in carotid intima media thickness, which was normal at baseline in both groups, probably because they had been so well treated. Now here's a surprise, CIMT was still normal after two years from the study, and there was no difference between the groups. Go figure. Guess it's hard to make normal more normal with treatment. But this study led several well-known medical experts to label azetamide a placebo that certainly cooked azetamide's goose. It's my frustration sometimes. It's like they're just saying it's a placebo because there was no difference. But it seems they failed to take into account that the people who took part in this study came from sort of lipid clinics and they'd already been really well treated to begin with it's like take a random sample from the populace and perform the same study would azetamide look like a placebo in that in in that instance maybe i don't know because nobody's done it yet but i'd, I'd highly doubt it 
Even a randomized controlled clinical trial that showed azetamibe improved cardiac, cardiac outcomes sorry, when added to a statin, it got no respect. The improve it or improve reduction of outcomes Viterin efficacy international trial randomized patients with an acute coronary, coronary syndrome to simvastatin 40 milligrams per day with or without azetamibe. The study was criticized because it had to be extended to accrue a sufficient number of cardiac events, so the results were reported after a median follow-up of six years. Nevertheless, there was a 2% absolute reduction in cardiovascular events from 347 to 32.7%. I view this as a proof of concept study, proof of the concept that azetamibe reduces cardiovascular events, including cardiac death, MI, stroke, revascularization and unstable angina. It took so long to see the effect because of treatment. LDLCs were so good in both groups and only slightly lower with azetamibe, 53.7 versus 69.6 milligrams per deciliter. I mean, that to me seems like, you know, it's not a massive difference, but it's worth noting for sure. There are now recent data demonstrating that azetamibe is especially effective in older patients. This is interesting, actually. The absolute reduction in cardiovascular events in Improve It with azetamibe was 0.9% for those under the age of 65, 0.8% for those aged 65 to 74, but 87 in those 75 or older. The curves for the oldest patients started to diverge in the first year. Among the patients less than 75 years old, only 11 needed to be treated to prevent one event, whereas amongst patients less than 75, you had to treat 125 patients to prevent one event. The absolute risk reduction was 10 times higher in those over age 75. This is probably due to the fact that cholesterol absorption increases with age. So I guess azetamibe is a drug of interest to older cardiologists and therapeutically very useful in older patients, but I don't think azetamibe should be restricted to older patients and cardiologists. Azetamibe is generic and therefore inexpensive. Anything that lowers LDLC by increasing LDL receptor activity reduces cardiovascular events. Consequently, azetamibe should be tried in patients with insufficient LDLC reduction from statins alone before progressing to more expensive younger agents. So there you go, that was a opinion piece by Paul Thompson. Like I say, he's a medical doctor and a sort of cardiovascular specialist, as far as I'm aware. Um, I'm not gonna tell you how to interpret that paper, but I just found that really interesting, um, especially like I say, because of the sort of, um, the sort of way it's just been brushed aside by a lot of experts in the medical field it just seems really strange to me um especially since when you look into the side of that profile which we'll do now it's it, it's no different from sort of some drugs that you can literally just buy over the counter in my country in the uk but if you want azetamibe you've got to sort of get prescribed it and the only way you're going to get prescribed it is if you already have a sort of high level of LDL cholesterol, which sort of eliminates the possibility of, you know, ever being able to use something like azetamibe in conjunction with proper diet in practice and, and a sort of healthy lifestyle to reduce LDL and ultimately the sort of overall level cholesterol within people and possibly make a big reduction in, in you know, on a population wide scale to how many cardiovascular problems people have. So just on that note, let's just have a little look. Some of the side effects um, of azetamibe, these are the more common ones and the less common ones. There are more up here, I'm not trying to hide that, but frequency not determined, um, you know, it's some of those side effects. If the frequency is not determined, it, it literally can mean one person experienced this. And they logged it. So I'm just going to cover the more common and less common because it's safe to assume probably one in 10 people would experience these and maybe one in 100 to 1000 would experience some of these depending on which symptom it is. So here we go. So you get more common fever, headache, muscle pain, runny nose, sore throat, less common back pain, body aches or pain, chest pain, chills, cold or flu-like symptoms congestion, coughing, diarrhea, difficulty in moving, dizziness, dryness or soreness of the throat, 
uh, hoarseness, muscle pain or stiffness, pain in joints, pain or tenderness around the eyes, and so on. So shortness of breath, stomach pain, stuffy nose, tender swollen glands in the neck, tightness of the chest or wheezing, trouble in swallowing, unusual tiredness or weakness, and voice changes. So probably going over that seems really bad when you look at it on the say on the on the face of it. Um, you know things like coughing, diarrhea, dizziness. Um, probably more serious ones being shortness of breath, stomach pain. Um, you know tightness of the chest, trouble in swallowing, whatever it may be. All these different things they do sound bad, but then all we have to do is look at the sort of common side effects of aspirin, which can be bought over the counter freely in the UK. And you can sort of use the two as a comparison. I'm not saying one's better than the other. Ideally, you don't want any side effects associated with any drugs, though you know the likelihood of that is also quite slim. But just let's have a look at aspirin. Common side effects, conditions of excess stomach acid secretion, irritation of the stomach or intestines, nausea, vomiting, heartburn, stomach cramps. Rare side effects of aspirin, a type of blood disorder where the blood, red blood cells burst called uh, hemolytic anemia, normal anemia, a decrease in uh, platelet clotting, uh, pla uh, platelets are just like um, little sort of um i believe they're cells they're sort of like almost like blank cells found within the blood that sort of help clot when you know you sort of sustain damage large purple or brown skin blotches decreased blood platelets like we were saying there um so you know this is why people bleed out sometimes when they have too many aspirin low levels of white blood cells bleeding within the skull bleeding uh, bronchospasm stomach or intestinal ulcers blood coming from the anus damage to the liver and inflammation bleeding of the stomach or intestines a type of kidney inflammation called intestinal nephritis so you can literally go down to your supermarket buy aspirin and if you're one of the unlucky people who has a rare side effect to it you can end up not having you know your blood clot when it's supposed to bleeding of the brain bleeding from your anus right arguably the side effect profile even in the severe cases of azetamide use is not as severe as that it's not you know nothing on there for as far as i can see is going to kill you you know bleeding bleeding on the brain or the anus might which begs the question it's like why can't you buy azetamide if people could buy azetamide over the counter and it was used in a preventative way in sort of conjunction with healthy eating and general healthy lifestyle choices regular cardiovascular exercise it's like you know the fact that 54 percent of america have too high a cholesterol and the leading cause of death in the world is is sort of heart disease cardiovascular related problems Surely if this was able to be used as a preventative medicine as opposed to having to wait to get diagnosed with high cholesterol when you know problems already plaques probably already building up and problems are already starting and let's face it most people are not going to be so concerned that they're going to be getting their blood works done a couple of times a year and checking what their sort of HDL their LDL uh, their lipid profile is looking like even though it's really easy to get done you can get it done at boots pharmacy you can get it done um you know there's there's private online clinics that you can go to the nhs of course um people aren't going to be getting their blood work done and checking what their lipid profile is like so if there's one thing i would like to do in this video is encourage you to get your lipid profile checked get your blood work done and find out what your ldl is um because you know you might benefit from even if it's not azetamide it might just be a statin that you get prescribed but it's it's better than nothing um all i wanted to do in this video is like i say just sort of draw attention to azetamide i'm just very inquisitive about why it's not sort of available over the counter basically in the uk i'm not sure about other countries if you know more about azetamide than i do which probably isn't hard I've put it out on my Instagram, I've put it out in different places that I'm looking for people to let me know if they've been taking this for longer than six months at sort of the, the sort of efficacious dose of 10 milligrams um, a day, 
I'm really interested to see if anyone's experienced any sort of bad side effects to it, long-term side effects to azetamibe use. The craziest part about it is it's like you can literally get psalms delivered to your door in this country, but you can't get things like azetamibe. And I know why that is. Obviously, like the fitness industry is mainly centered around the aesthetics and like psalms are going to make people look better and that's what most people get into fitness for not the sort of health and longevity aspect of it so people aren't cooking up um you know zetamibe in sort of private labs and stuff like that it's just not going to happen is it they're not going to be selling it online but i looked everywhere just out of interest to see if i could get uh, a zetamibe online without a prescription and I, I honestly i was looking for about an hour and a half i couldn't find it anywhere um whereas as I will show you now, and don't get me wrong, I'm not giving away the website address, I'm not going to give you the name of the website or anything like that, I'm going to cover it over when we have a look, but I'm just showing you, you can literally just go on a, a, a certain websites and get psalms delivered to your door, which are way more dangerous than things like a Zetmime. So here you go, like what we covered last week, uh, LGD4033 and Rad140 here. I've just got rid of the pictures because I'm trying to be careful about how I go about showing you this. Um, but yeah, I've sort of checked out online um, the sort of authenticity of this website and it would appear as though it is authentic. According to people on Reddit, this is the real deal. Um, Trustpilot's actually giving it a solid rating as well not only that but the company who run this website have actually been registered as an official business on company's house since 2014 so it's not even like you know this this company's come up in the past year or so they've been about for quite some time it would seem so yeah i just i just wanted to show you that just to literally say it's it's fucking crazy to me that you can, <laughs> you can literally get Selective androgen receptor modulators delivered to your door with all the problems we sort of covered that they can have in small dosages. You know, you can take Rad 140 at 10 milligrams per day and it's going to, you know, it could fuck your liver up. Take 10 milligrams per day of azetamide and you have a, you know, kind of shitty reaction to it. The worst thing you're going to probably get is a fever. That's probably the most common side effect to this drug. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to point out you can literally get things online that are going to sort of help you retain a sort of questionably healthy amount of, of lean muscle tissue and sort of affect your vital organs in a myriad of ways. But, you know, you can't get a drug that is probably going to stop you from having heart disease if used in, like I say, if used in conjunction with a healthy lifestyle and diet at the same time. I'm not saying here that azetamide is the be all and end all and that I'm not going to make the claim that everyone should be taking it and then you can just eat whatever you want. However, as we did say, part of azetamide's like sort of use is that it stops you absorbing dietary cholesterol in the first place. So in a way, it does play that sort of role in that you probably can be a little bit more unhealthy when taking azetamide's. But that's not what I'm trying to raise awareness of here. I'm just trying to point out that I think it would be great if we could get this preventatively rather than have to wait until somebody is sort of diagnosed at, or, or you know sort of diagnosed as being in a risk category it'd be great if people could get their blood work done and in the same way you can buy aspirin over the counter buy azetamide over the counter that is something i would potentially like to see however i'm not an expert i'm not a doctor i'm not qualified in medicine in any way which is important to say i'm not giving out advice here i'm just asking questions just interested in the subject uh, and hopefully you are too and that's what brought you here so i'm going to end that video here guys thanks a lot again if you tuned in really appreciate it uh, if you want to follow what i'm doing you can head over to my instagram it's at sunday lifters uh, make sure you drop this video a like subscribe and drop a comment whether you agree or disagree with anything i said like I say if you've got any sort of stories about zetamibe any useful info you want to share please please do drop a comment i'm really interested in this right now um you can get in touch via email it's sundaylifters at gmail.com for workout plans meal plans and online coaching thanks again for tuning in guys and i'll catch you next time